What is up guys, it is Aaron and welcome back to the channel. Like the new camera angle. I'm still trying to kind of sort it out uh, a bit, but today was a video requested by one of you guys. It was requested by SIM card, and uh, here's the comment. It says, hey, I saw your video on building your RC cars. I'm really interested in building one, but I don't know what uh, the best chassis is, motor is, etc, 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 for a cheap price. And can you do a video of what uh, I should be doing, what I should be making? Kind of. So the comment should be up on the screen as well, if I can do that. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. Basically today I'm just going to be explaining all the processes I go through for building an RC car or building anything in fact, even with my kit car that I'm building, I'm, I do a whole process on that and um, I'm just going to go off and take you guys through it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to figure out is what you're going to be building your car for. Is it going to be for off-roading? Is it going to be for high speeds? Is it going to be for rock crawling? Is it going to be for on-roads? Is it going to be for racing? Is it going to be for drifting? All that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of things that you need to figure out first before you even start buying anything or um, looking at anything, you need to figure out what your purpose of building an RC is going to be. So let's just say for example, I was going to build a off-road short course truck for racing. Uh, what I would uh, first off do is look, um, not on eBay, but on proper RC websites for uh, chassis, because uh, you don't want to buy a second-hand crap um, chassis that could just break any moment. And um, the difference between racing and bashing is exactly those words. You're racing one and you're bashing one. If you're bashing, um, I'd recommend going with a plastic chassis. But if you're racing, you would really, really want to go for a aluminum or a metal uh, chassis because that'll be so much better. It'll be a lot lighter actually than the um, plastic because uh, it'll be thinner. This is not a good example of a high-speed RC car, but if you're going to be wanting to do an RC, a high-speed RC car, you're going to want an on-road style car. Not an off road one because uh, this is this is way too high off the ground for high speeds because uh, what can happen is when it's going forward, air could get under the car and uh, have the whole thing tip up and fly all over the place and it's not going to be able to be controllable at all, uh, which is why I kind of have the wheelie bar there. <laughs> and same for rock crawling and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, you just want to search up rock crawling chassis or anything like that. If you're doing competition rock crawling, then uh, you're going to want to get what I have here is an aluminum frame. Um, and I'll go through all the specs of everything that you'll need for like high speeds, on road drifting, all that kind of stuff. Take this um, whole thing one car at a time instead of giving you everything in one. So uh, this is my Praxis two wheel drive slash. Um, and basically this is stock, this is a stock slash. And I think it's gonna be best for, uh, for trying to explain all this. So I'm just gonna go off, get a better camera angle and just explain all of this. Now the first thing when you're wanting to think about um, building an RC, let's say you've got the chassis. We're gonna, you're going to want to know and have an idea of what your car is going to look like. Do you want it to look realistic? Do you want it to drive realistic? Which is what drives us have gone with this? Or do you want it to be um, race bred, not realistic at all, just something cool and something out, out, outlandish? Um, so you've got to figure that out first and then you can kind of figure out what kind of parts you need, like the bumpers and everything like that, to get the looks down. Do the inside is I haven't cleaned it out yet, but um, on the inside you're gonna want to figure out if you're again gonna be wanting this realistic, which is why I have these speakers here. I'm still gonna have to do a review on that at some point, guys. I've been lacking on that. Um, what you've also got to figure out is how fast you want this thing to go. Do you want this thing to go fast, handle well, or do you want this to go mediocrely fast and just have a bash with it and have fun with it without getting into any competition races? That's one of the things you're gonna to have to figure out. This is just a bashing car for me. This is the XL5 ESC with the Titan 12 turn motor and a uh, Traxxas, uh, just the stock Traxxas server. I think it's a, no, it's not a you know. Um, so that's just the kind of things you're gonna to wanna to think about. Also battery as well. You're going to want to know if you want lipos or Nikoman hybrid batteries. There's a whole load of different videos out there telling you um, what different batteries do. If you have a higher voltage of battery, it'll give you a longer lasting life. If you have a lower voltage, but higher milliamps, uh, it'll give you a lot more speeds. The other thing you're going to want to think about is gear to one ratio. And what does that mean? That just basically means the size of your gear pinion to the actual size of your spur gear. Um, and this can there's a load of videos out there as well uh, that you guys can... Uh, look at to help you guys figure this out. I'm not going to go through all the maths and stuff. This is just going to be a little video of just me just, you know, telling you guys, not showing you, but just telling you guys how to go about building it. I want you guys to actually physically learn by yourselves and what to do 
instead of me just showing you guys what to do because I feel like that's the best way a lot of people learn is doing it themselves but knowing kind of what to do. So what you're going to want to take into consideration is your differential. Do you want your differentials to be locked, open, um, semi-opened uh, or something like that. I can't remember if there are semi-opened ones or not but um, basically what locked and unlocked differentials are is basically a locked differential does not let this happen. It doesn't let the tire spin in the opposite direction. Um, get that leaf out of there. Um, and lock differential means that you know if you're going drifting about or something like that, then the wheels just won't like you know diff out, and uh, there'll be one wheel spinning and one wheel won't be. That's basically to stop strain on the motor, which is a good thing because you don't want too much strain to be on the motor, otherwise you might burn out the motor or something might catch on fire or something like that and then your, all your money will be wasted so you've got to try and figure that out but if you've got a motor that can handle stress like a 3200 kV motor with a 60 amp psc that'll be fine you won't really need uh unlock differentials as long as you have heat as long as you have like some sort of heat sink or cooling system in it, it'll be fine suspension as well this can be very customizable as well the same with everything when you're building a car obviously um but your suspension do you want it to be sloppy do you want it to be stiff do you want it to be springy do you want it to be low to the ground do you want it to be high off the ground um so if you're racing, you want your uh, chassis to have a low center of gravity so it doesn't flip over as much in the corners, which this one it does have quite a high center of gravity because of the these parts here that lift the um, center of the chassis up so it doesn't catch on any rocks, which is a good thing. Um, but obviously the car's high off the ground, so if you go into a turn, there'll be too much grip on the tires and you will flip. Speaking of tires as well, you've also got to figure it out for off-roading if you want your tires to have lots of grip or you know mediocre grip or little grip you've got to figure all that kind of stuff out you what if you want to be drift around in dirt and uh ro throwing rooster tails about and all that kind of crap you know you've got to just try and figure that out for yourselves yeah just try and try different uh foam inserts try different tire compounds try different rims to match the car just um take your time with it and just try and have like a mental image of what your off-road truck wants to look like now, on-road cars are actually the cheaper side of the spectrum of RC cars because you don't really need a whole load of different parts to make sure it doesn't flip over and all this kind of crap and make sure that nothing breaks on it. Because on-road cars are basically that. You're not taking them off-road, you're not bashing them about, you're not, you know, doing anything crazy. So you can get a lot of cheap parts um, for building an RC on-road car. Same thing with the off-road um, cars, you've got to figure out what you want your on-road car to look like, what you want it to be able to do, do you want it to be able to race, do you want it to be able to just go off and muck about in your speed, in your uh, spare time or something like that, you've just got to try and figure that out, you've got to try and figure out uh, what you're building it for. And you've also got to think about the loops, but very, very importantly, you've also got to think about aerodynamics for an on-road car, because uh, for an on-road car, if you're you know racing with an on-road car, you want your car to be planted to the ground, you want air to rush over the body and push the rear wheels down, the same as the front. Um, so you just want that to be, you know, good. Which is what Traxxas have done with their on-road cars. They've made these little slits into the bodies. So the wheels are pushing down on the ground and you've got a lot of grip. This is the reason as well, on-road RC cars are so much cheaper than any other type of car out there. Because it's so compact, the chassis is so small, a lot smaller than a lot of other RCs. And it's just um, really pleasing to the eye when you can see something so compact and so nice looking on the inside. Uh, the chassis are very small, which means they'll be less in price. Um, same with the dog bones and all that other kind of crap, they'll be a lot smaller and a lot cheaper. Same with the suspension and everything else on this car. Now, if you're drifting, on the other hand, you want your suspension to be kind of soft, but not too soft, because otherwise you get a lot of body roll and you won't be able to control your drifts as well. So you just want it to be slightly soft. This is very, very stiff, and it's got to be very stiff because it's very, very low to the ground. So, um, that's just for on-road RC cars that aren't going to be doing any drifting. If you are going to be doing drifting, you want your suspension just to be a little bit more off the ground and just to be a little bit more plush um, and a little bit more easier to push down just so you've got that little, you know, movement into your drifts. Same with the tyres again, you just want to try and figure out if you want them to be grippy, if you want them to be plastic so you can drift. Um, Four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive as well, you want to go off and try and figure that out. If it's an on-road RC car, I would recommend four-wheel drive. Um, but if you're drifting, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive will work, just not front-wheel drive because that never works with drift cars. If you're in for a challenge, go two-wheel, rear-wheel drive, or uh, if you want to just to have it a little bit easier just to get the hang of it and kind of understand how drifting works, four-wheel drive will be your best bet. And you're going to want to figure out how fast you're going, how much torque you want. So this is again just the stock uh, Traxxas uh, 4GT. 
so uh, there's really not much to it. There's just the same XL5 ESC and the Titan 12 turn motor. Um, and obviously you're going to want to figure out if you want to go brushless, brushed, sensor brushed, sensor brushless, other things like that. Um, again, are you making a high speed on-road car or are you making a beginner RC car for you? Because this could be your first build and you could put in just again a Titan 12 turn motor and an XL5 ESC, which are kind of expensive. Um, but obviously you can find a lot cheaper ES brushed ESCs and motors out there that aren't from Traxxas. And gear ratios, that, that is the must for if you're drifting. You want to have a good amount of torque and not a lot of speed. You want to carry speed through your drifts, obviously, but you don't want to be too fast carrying through the drifts um, because then you could just hit the wall and hit someone else and someone else will be pissed off at you and slap you in the face because you hit them off the track. But it doesn't matter what you're doing for on-road, you want a fast servo because off-road it's fine, you can just get away, you can get away with slow uh, servos, but on-road you can't because you're not drifting about the place in dirt and stuff and you're not having all these problems with on-road tyres that you would usually have, which isn't problems, it's just how they are unfortunately, uh, which uh, Trax has done a really good job of installing this, ES, uh, this not, not ESC, but this uh, servo. Um, because there is a thing here, if I can show you, where the ESC, where the servo is, here, the little metal bit there, you can tighten it up and loosen it, and there's a spring on there, which um, will put more strain on the uh, servo, or less strain on the servo. Um, but to be honest, I wouldn't recommend having that in, because again, it could come loose, and you just won't have any steering at all. Um, so you want fast uh, steering, just because you'll be able to turn corners a lot quicker, it'll be a lot more responsive, and uh, you'll have a lot more control over the car just on a whole. We're moving up to more the expensive side of RCs. Uh, if you're building a rock crawler, it does get very expensive because of all the complicated joints and um, suspension and wheels and the innards and the servos, all that kind of stuff does come up to a very, very big price, unfortunately. Um, but if you're wanting to buy like an RTR kind of truck um, or something like that, I got this for like £140, um, so it could have been 160 but I know the lady, like I said, at the RC model shop, I can't remember how much I actually bought it for, I can't remember if it was 120 or 60 or something like that, uh, but I'd just been sitting on the shelf for years, so I thought I'd just go off and pick up. Um, come straight up, it doesn't look too complicated, does it? But looking at the side, you can see that all these complicated joints I was talking about, and um, same with the front where the steering is, it does get very complicated very quick, and you do have to have a lot of experience for this uh, type of build. Uh, while as other ones like the off-road trucks, for example, you don't need really a lot, a lot of experience. You just need to know the gist of how to build one and that kind of stuff. Now the lady I bought this from <laughs> was abundantly clear. You do not want to go fast with this because it's not made for speed. She was abundantly clear with me for that. I was like, yeah, I know. I've been in this for years. Um, but yeah, these are not made for speed at all. These are made for slow, high torque, off-road, extreme stuff, you know. These, these are no joke, you know. They might not go very fast, but these can literally just go over just about anything. And here's that lock differential I was talking about as well. You see that when I turn the right tire, it turns the left tire the same orientation. And that just kind of gives you a little example of what locked and unlocked differentials are. For these, you do must need locked differentials because you don't want to be high centered or one wheel is on a rock and the other one's on like literally nothing and this tire will just be spinning and spinning and spinning and not getting any good from anything and this one will just be standing still there just like, hi, yeah, you done fucked up. Brushed systems are what is usually used in rock crawlers, but a lot of people have actually been going off to brush lifts because you can get a lot more torque out of them. You can get a little bit more speed out of them, which again, these aren't really made for that. But torque is one of the things that you need to have for one of these, like I said. This is why RCs get so damn expensive as well. With the articulation for these rock crawlers is incredible. You know, I can literally have these wheels flat here, have this almost up at 90 degrees, which is just incredible. Which just shows you guys how much like work has gone into these and how really complicated these can actually get. It's surprising how complicated these can get. What we're going to want to figure out is how much torque you want. Do you want high amounts of torque? Do you want low amounts of torque? Uh, do you want mediocre types of uh, torque? Because you don't want to have too much torque because if you're in 
mud or something and you just your tires just go uh, your tires just spin at full speed and they're not getting any grip at all um because they're just digging a hole deeper for themselves um so you've just got to try and figure that out i love the uh, gearing setup on this as well because you can see here is what i mean by gear ratio this is a very very tiny gear pinion and that is a massive uh, uh spur gear um i think this is what is this this is a looks like a 90 teeth uh, gear to a 10 tooth gear or something like that which is obviously a massive difference which gives you again low speeds but a lot of torque gears again are something that you're just gonna have to spend a lot of money on i looked these up online these tires these selves cost 30 pounds each well 30 pounds for two pairs so that'll be like 60 pounds already um that's a little bit over half for what it would cost to make an on-road RC car or if you're lucky an off-road RC car. It's something called torque lean which is basically when you're driving the chassis will just lean to one side or another. That's nothing too bad, that's really nothing too bad at all. Uh, you can just put some like um, spacers in the suspension springs and that'll just sort itself out really because um, it's not anything too bad because you can see it's doing it right there. It's just leaning off to the right. Whenever I put it forward, it just goes to the right. Which is just because of the motor with the amount of torque that's in it, it just kind of turns the whole thing a bit like that. And because of the soft plush suspension, it just kind of stays like that when you're driving. Also as well, this is a Maverick MS25. It is all metal gears in here, that's what you want, because if you have plastic gears and you're off at an angle, your gear, your gears in the servo will just strip out straight away and you'll be going through a hundred of them. So metal gear ones are the ones that you're going to want to go for. Um, especially high torque ones as well, you really do want high torque uh, servos and you can see here as well the way that the servo works is again very complicated compared to the on-road, off-road RC cars. Um, which just makes this whole thing really really expensive to do for a rock crawler. So if you're going to make a rock crawler just make sure you have the money for it because it can get very costly, especially just for the chassis. Uh, the chassis are literally just this metal frame here and the plastic on the bottom. That's all the metal frames are and they can get very, very expensive. This is the most expensive thing you can ever, ever, ever build in the RC industry is a high speed 100 mile an hour plus RC car. Obviously going 100 miles an hour is going to cost you a lot. And you're going to want to go 100 miles an hour in an on-road car, like I said at the start of the video, because air could come under the car, lift the whole thing up. But because I have this body here and the roll bar at the back, when it squats down, it just really just kind of goes up a bit. And then once it's caught up to speed, this uh, body just kind of pushes the whole thing down into the ground. See here on the inside, it looks like a mess at the minute. But well, actually, no, this is probably the cleanest it's actually been, uh, surprisingly. But as you can see here, I've got a 3S LiPo, uh, a 1,900 kV motor, and a, what is that, say 20 kilogram servo from uh, Power I, ID or something like that. Um, I did think about getting a Savox servo, but those are really, really expensive. So this is the best one I could get. Um, and the 20 kilogram stands for 20 kilograms per centimeter of force. Um, a lot of people were annoyed at me uh, when I've done that, when I've done this uh, first ever see these a lot of people were really annoyed it's like it's not 20 kilograms it's 20 grams or something like that and it's like that's just the weight it's it's not even the weight of the thing it's just like how much weight this can push kind of really it, it, i'll explain it later now this car was actually an rtr from years and years ago i think i got this thing like three years ago or something like that and it's still going surprisingly uh, there's just little things here and there that i need to improve on um, but basically this car stock from HSP was like £120 or something like that, so it was very very cheap to buy. Um, but all the kind of things I've put it through, all the kind of different things I've put into it, has come up to around about £500, including the battery, the new differentials, the suspension and everything else, sorry, the suspension, dog, dog bones, A-arms, upper A-arms and all that kind of crap is all stock. The only thing that isn't stock that you can't see is the battery holder because I wanted to change this out because it just kind of looked a little bit better. New tires as well, but they're the same stock tires, they're just new. And these ones cost for the four of them around about £12.99, so you can get off with that. But this motor here, this uh, BL motor, costed me around about £80 or something like that. And the 
120, what is it, 120 amp ESC, costed me 60 to 80 pounds as well. So that's like over, like, well, 200, well, not over 200 pounds, it's almost 200 pounds just on the motor and the ESC alone. Um, the transmitter I got with it as well was 30 pounds, which was a steal for it because it's a FS GT 3B, I think it is. Um, and the servo costed me 40 pounds. Um, so, and the battery as well cost me 30 pounds as well. The new differentials as well cost me around about 25 pounds. The wheelie bar costed me uh, 15 pounds. Um, and the aluminum drive shaft costed me 20 pounds. So, as you can see, the prices just keep going up and up and up and up. I want to make a high speed um, RC car. You want to keep the chassis, well for cheap anyway, if you want to make it cheap, keep the stock chassis and as much things as you can stock because that will save you a lot of money. Um, but obviously I'm not going to want to keep this chassis stock, um, I'm just going to go off and replace it with a metal one at some point, get everything else back into it and have it going up again. That is it guys, I hope this video has helped you guys out a lot. Like I said, I want you guys to learn on your own because that's the way I learned and I think it's just the way that a lot of people learn themselves because then you can learn by your own mistakes and improve on them. So um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share it to friends and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!